Okay, we good? Well, thank you for hanging around. <laughs> the end of the day, we're just the, 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 the final robust few here. So we, I get the cream of the crop. That's right. So thank you for, for coming. Um, my name is Jeff Parker. Um, I'm, I'm a lot less technical than, than anybody else here. <laughs> um, I'm a CPA, an accountant by background. I, I've run IT shops and stuff, but um, I'm, I'm not the technical guy. Um, I've been a, with a CPA firm since 1985. Uh, I moved into the IT department in the CPA firm in 88. I'm obviously pretty old. Um, I left the firm in, in 2009. I've been doing independent consulting with a couple of my clients. So, so Genexus in the United States. Um, so I was involved way back when Genexus first came to the USA. And I don't even remember the date. It was like 1990-ish or late 80s, early 90s, I don't know. Um, with a gentleman named Ken Orr. Um, so Ken, Ken was one of the world's great thinkers. You know, he, I, I call him Obi-Wan Kenorbi. Um, and he still comes to me, <laughs> you know, he, he passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, fantastic friend of the firm and uh, an incredible man. And, and Terry Kimes uh, was my boss back then and Ken and Terry were, were friends and so I don't even know how Ken discovered Genexus, uh, but somewhere during his world travels came across Genexus and brought it back to Kansas and, and said, you guys got to check this out. And we did. We went back and forth. Uh, Brogan and Nicholas came and visited. Um, and we became the North American distributors of Genexus. Um, and we, we were the help desk, everything. It, it, was, it was a pretty cool operation. Um, many of the, of the Genexus users in the US today have their origins from way back then. So, so uh, MBS Textbook Exchange in Columbia, Missouri, um, SIS in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, they're very, very strong Genexus users, very involved in the US. Um, Madden Co. Steel Technologies. Um, so we, we actually were the original selling Genexus. Um, we, we didn't do a very good job of selling it after we ran out of people that we knew. <laughs> um, and so actually one of our support techs um, fell in love with one of the Genexus people and they started Genexus USA, uh, Dane and Veronica. That was, that was way back. So why did we get involved with Genexus in the 1990s? Well, there was a, a product called Sinon um, that was, we were doing AS400 software development and we had a bunch of clients and we were doing custom software and this product called Sinon was a rapid application development tool for RPG. And uh, uh, we were pretty interested in that. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, but it was a code generator, it looked, it looked pretty interesting. It did catch our interest and we were looking at it. Genexus, um, wow. Genexus just blew its doors off. You know, and, and when we were selling Genexus out in the marketplace, I was amazed that anybody would pay any attention to sign on because it, it didn't do any database normalization. It didn't, do any, it didn't do anything for you other than just streamline some of the coding. You know, Genexus, Genexus became our database architect. Um, we had RPG programmers, dozens of them, and many of them weren't very good at database architecture. And so we were, we had databases that we had built that weren't terribly good. And when we brought Genexus in and it, and we saw how it was building the databases, it, it actually, even to users that weren't in Genexus, just the old school RPG guys, um, it improved our database architecture. It also, way back then, they were starting to talk about agile development. 
It's kind of a new thing, right? Um, for us, we were able to go to our clients and do prototyping and back and forth and back and forth, and, and it, it gave us agility. Um, yeah, we didn't even call it waterfall or agile, or we didn't have terminology, but, but it, did, it did let us be agile with our client. The other thing that it did, um, in our firm, we were really bad at PC software development. Uh, this was like pre-Windows, okay? I mean, this is like Windows 3.1. Really bad, right? There was a piece of software that we used called Clipper. I don't know if any old people here remember Clipper. Clipper, yeah. And we, we built a bunch of stuff with Clipper, and then Clipper died. <laughs> and, then, and then we did uh, um, Borland Delphi. We had a bunch of stuff that we did with Delphi. And then Delphi died. God dang it. It's so frustrating. Genexus let us put everything in one, in, in, a, in a knowledge base, and, and protected us, right? And so we were able to, to stay modern using Genexus. So some of our earliest applications, I, I'm just going to focus on a couple of them, and I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of details. But um, in the early 1990s, it, like shortly after we started with Genexus, we had a liquor distributor, a great big company that sold liquor all over the place to our, to our bunch of liquor stores. And in Kansas, you can only sell liquor in a liquor store. You can't have it in a in a grocery store, you can't have it anywhere but in a liquor store. And they have to have a special license and poof. So this liquor distributor um, came to us and said, we need an order entry system. <laughs> Which was hilarious because we had just started with Genexus and back then, if you wanted to learn about Genexus, the first thing they did was they go, um, order header, Order detail, this is a transaction, this is, I mean, in it, <laughs> yeah. But it, it, so we actually named some of our objects <laughs> in, the, in the thing that we built for these guys, like order header and order detail, just like the Genexus training video stuff. It was perfect, and it was a tremendous success. Um, in the mid-1990s, we have a, a good-sized cabinet manufacturer. It's a a small big company or a big small company, I'm not sure which. It's an awkward sized cabinet manufacturer. They have about 150 employees They're all across the US. And they do custom cabinetry and they have a real weird pricing algorithm. It's really difficult for them to do, to, to, to price. And so we developed that using Genexus. Um, all, still all green screen. This is all 5250 display stuff. In the late 1990s, um, we also did a full ERP for uh, property casualty insurance companies. We had three insurance companies come to us and say, you know, we need something to manage our business. And, and so um, they pooled their resources and we wrote um, an ERP. It was pretty broad. We actually had a separate KB for each one of our, um, each one of their lines of business. You know, so auto and, and marine and house and fire and flood. And there were all these different KBs that we had. Um, and we did it all AS400. I am kind of an AS400 guy. So it was all AS400 and, and uh, green screen. So, so then the world changed, right? Everything always changes. Um, so the internet happened, and, and suddenly um, nobody wanted any green screen stuff, and everybody wanted to extend applications to their customers and, and all kinds of stuff. So, so um, we kept doing green screen development, but we used a piece of software called Jaywalk. I don't know if any of you know what Jaywalk is. I think that it's actually still around. It's called Rocket by Legasuite, I think, is the name of the company. What they do is they intercept the 5250 data stream, and they, they pretty it up. And it gives you a, a 
web-based looking display that's based on the 5250 data stream. It's kind of yucky. <laughs> um, it, was, it was based on the Java virtual machine, so you actually had a little Java applet running on your local machine. Like right after we did this for the cabinet company, Sun and Java started duking it out in court. I don't know if you guys remember the, the million dollars per day fine that they were doing to Microsoft for licensing violations and stuff. Yeah. Well, then Microsoft pulled the Java virtual machine out of Windows and our, our support desk phones lit up. Uh, it was, you know, you have to go to Sun. And, and, and Sun kept changing where they were putting the Java virtual. It was, it was so ugly. So uh, it, right about this time, I was taking over the, the full management of all of the, of all of the IT department. And, and all of my developers were saying, let's abandon Genexus. It's terrible. We can't keep doing you know, all of this jaywalk stuff. Everything's all terrible. And so um, I invited Veronica who was with Genexus USA to come to Kansas and give us a state of the product address. And this is, Genexus 9 was the latest and greatest flavor. And so, you know, she came and, and uh, she said, and it does this, and it does this. And, and I, uh, I asked my guys, I sat in the back of the room, I was like, hey, did you know it did that? <laughs> and they went, no. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what about that? Did you know it did that? I'm like, no. <laughs> I, so I pretty quickly saw that uh, the, the problem wasn't Genexus. The, the problem was us. So I invited her back, and we did a full week training session with all of my staff. And I, I sat in on it. I think I've been through Genexus training three, four times now. I've actually have written some code by now, but um, during the training session, one of my lead developers actually wrote or rewrote the custom wood products application for a web. Just did web panels and, and I mean, when I say rewrote, it wasn't a whole lot of rewrite. It was just refaced, right? Um, and he did it. I mean, and this was a pretty huge application. So that's a couple hundred objects, right? And in one week, while he's in training, <laughs> training, I'm supposed to be paying attention, but <laughs> he was always the problem child of the group. But he, he rewrote it. It was awesome. It was great. So we, we went back out to the client and said, hey, look at this. And they went, oh, that's great. And so we let them stay, you know, play with it for a week. And we came back a week later, and they said, here's the book we wrote about how to use the application. And that's when we realized, hey, we don't, we're not very good at UI, <laughs> right? The client actually had to write a book for their users on how to use the software. <laughs> it was a big book. <laughs> it was a big, thick thing. It was terrible. So partway into that meeting, I just went, okay, this is not good. And so I, I took a team of people and, and we, we went to a room and we patterned everything after Yahoo Mail because <laughs> everybody knows how to use that. And it, it worked real well. So now the, the app is out there it's on the web. All of their users are using it. It's very slick. So where are they now? Okay, here, um, the, liquor, the liquor guys are gone. They were, they were so successful that another company swooped in Bottom, they had some big ERP, it's gone. Um, but the cabinet manufacturer, they're still going. In fact, if we're getting ready to do mobile. The, uh, none of these guys are doing mobile yet, but, but looking at mobile, um, <coughs> everything is all web-based, so they have no more green screen. It's all, it's all Java web-based. They have over 600 external users, so um, all of their dealers get online and, and use this software to do business with them. Um, and then the same thing's true for the, for the insurance companies. So insurance companies um, are, are also web-based and um, pushing 
um, policy owner stuff out directly to, to end users as well as internal users. So the hidden value for us in Genexus, um, so the other day I was looking at some code, it was a procedure for the custom wood product system and I saw some, uh, a comment in the code, it was in there, and the, and the comment was dated like 1995. And that little block of code executes probably 400 times a day still to this day. And it's, it's old enough to go drinking with me. It's, it's awesome. So the great reasons to use Genexus are still there. Rapid application development, good database management, artificial intelligence. The technology changes at a different pace than business, right? So what Genexus does for us is it'll, it protects us. The same code that used to run on the green screen, now runs on the web, soon will run on, on mobile. It's, it's awesome, and, and who knows where after that? IoT or, it, it doesn't matter because our business core is all still in the knowledge base. Okay, it's not magic, it's Genexus. <laughs> You have to still be smart, right? So we did some dumb stuff. Like, like one of our apps that we had, I had a Java developer. I, I, I brought him in and, oh, this is gonna be great. He's so good with Java. He's gonna take to Genexus really well. And what he did was he wrote everything in Java and then he made little hooks and you know, little external objects in Genexus. So we had little chunks of code in Genexus that called big chunks of code in Java. Thanks a lot. You're fired. <laughs> um, so I, I think the moral is, you know, stay inside the box, behave yourself, like like follow the rules. Don't don't go cheating. You know, we whenever we moved to other platforms, JavaScript caused us trouble. Stuff that we had embedded, stuff that we had done on our own, got us in trouble. But if we stay inside the box, and we and we behave ourselves with Genexus. Genexus protected us for the most part. So use Genexus. Um, it'll be good for you now and, and it will also be good for you later. Thank you. Any, any questions? <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Yes. Over the, uh, over the 18 years, what's the biggest change that you've seen in Genexus? It was 28. 28. Uh, I was being kind. Yeah. <laughs> I had dark hair. Um, the biggest change. I don't know. I think the biggest change that I've seen in Genexus is really the, the volume of, of platforms that they go to they support, right? You know, so, so um, it used to be, of course, because our focus was so much on the AS400 world, you know, um, but now with mobile, you have Android and iOS, and you have all these different operating systems and IoT and, and the things, uh, the stuff that they're talking about today, foy, this is really cool stuff. I can't wait to get to Genexus 16 on some of these things because they're, it looks very cool. So I think that they're, they're speeding up the, the number of platforms that they're really getting to. Anybody else? Well, thank you for sticking around. <laughs>